I married in France in my parents' restaurant. I had a little baby. I uh, was gonna come earlier than when I did, January 1954. We got married in France, February 1953. But I could not travel because I was pregnant. The midwife has said, if you travel, you're gonna lose this child. So you better have this baby in France, which had happened. So when I came to Glens Fall in 1954, January, I had a four months old baby. Well, in the beginning, I stayed with the in-laws. And I won't bring that up, it's not nice. I arrived here in January for the snow and I wanted to die. I cried every day. Hate it, hate it, hate it. And he was gone. He was working. First he worked for his father, who was very, very good also in air conditioning. He never got paid. And one day I said, you know, Joe, we need money for formula. Because you work every day, you're gone. I don't see you, but I don't see no money. I need money to buy this baby, you know. So yeah, it was tough coming to America. You don't speak, you don't know nobody. And then you have a husband, that's why you come, because as the songs say, what I did for love, what I did for love. And you stuck home, thank God for the child. Without the child, I would have never stayed. I think I would have gone back. And my mother had given me a little bit of money and said, keep this money in the bank. Don't tell no one, and if things don't work out, take the baby and come back. Well, I couldn't do that to Joe, as I called him, my G.I. Joe. He was a good man. He worked very hard to keep me going with whatever I needed. And we finally got out of his parents' house, and we got our home place. Papa used to drive the trucks from Prime. So he got me an old Buick. And I had my license from France. I would go to the local store like I was um, Central Market and said, shrimp, rabbit, all sign language. And he tried to help me. Everybody was one. Nobody never said, you shouldn't be here. People were wonderful. I think that's a lot to do why I wanted to stay. I was welcome. And then my mom and dad came, and they just loved everything about America, except the corn on the cob. They said, we feed the pig in the France. <laughs> we don't eat that. My dad, when he came, of course, he spoke Italian and French. He found out about this little Italian restaurant in Grenzfeld called The Gold Sheet on Warren Street. So he went one day to have a beer, and he met the owner, owner of Vance, as we call him, as the old town call him, Vance the Prince. And they got to be buddy-buddy. And they spoke Italian, of course. And they said, you know, we're going to be staying here. They were on a visa, six months. They, so he said, you want to run the place I got on the lake? We'll put the license under your son-in-law. My dad could not have a license because he was not an American. He was here on the tourist. So he said, Pietro, I'll give you the garrison, 6000 for the season. And that way you keep busy, your wife, you can get the shelf, the pizza shelf for me. Very simple. And my mom was a great cook. And uh, that's how it started. So they would run that the summer. Papa would go on weekend and he's still working in air conditioning. 
he would go on the weekend in Tin Bar. I wait on the table, and I got a friend of mine, a French girl, and we would, she would work it there with me, and we would make whatever tip from the pizza, the buck pizza, and 10 cents went in our pocket. That was our tip. And we kept that six years. This is how we got to be well known in the area. And uh, then my dad, after six years, uh, Vance D'Amelio was his name, said, do you, Joe, want to buy the 66000 And my husband turned it down. My father couldn't buy it because he was not an American. And then it started getting problems all over Lake George with the SLA, the state liquor authority serving underage. And my father felt like it wasn't right for Joe to take the brunt of that when really my dad was the one that was making the money in the business. And then when I left him, he said, I wish you luck. We both gave tears. I went in the office, picked up my paycheck, and he said, I wish you lots of luck at the French restaurant, but if it doesn't work out, you always have a job here. So this is part of another part of my life. So when my mom came and visit, we had the house on Dix Avenue. It was my father's house. She said, you know, Joe, I think this area needs a French restaurant. Joe says, you know, I think it's a good idea. And Ah, we got to find out. So Lulu Place there on Route 9 has been let down for a long time. And it was the birdcage. Always looked to me like it was up on a hill. When you drove on Route 9, I said, that would be a nice little chateau, little inn. So she'll think. I said, you know who stole us this place? A shyster lawyer. He made Papa sign without even him talking to me. And when he came home, he said to me, I need, I had my $10,000 saved in the bank. I was always a saver, always. Even when he brought home 55 bucks a week, I always had an envelope. I go to my bank and I put $10. So I end up, I had about 10,000. He said, I need the money. I said, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to leave you, and I'm going back to France. You'll never, you'll never get this money. Because he, he didn't know how to save anyone. He said, I bought the restaurant. I said, you bought what? Which what? Oh, God, it's trick. I said, you go back and you tell him. Your wife don't want to let go of that money. Because Joe signed it. I don't know what the hell he was signing. But, you know, I didn't want no part of the restaurant I didn't have four kids then, but I already had three. And uh, I didn't want, I know when you're in a, this kind of business, you pinned up all the time. So anyway, that's what happened, and I gave him the 10 grand. That he could go and buy, you know, it was, they had stripped this place to nothing. No sink, no stove, no nothing. No floor, no bar, they had. And he did it all himself. So Joe fixed this place, like I said earlier. We opened up, and um, my father had connection in France. With uh, He had a good friend whose son had been in Strasbourg, France, to the CIA, La Culinary Institute, but not of America, C culinary school. And he was... He had told his dad, this kid, I would like one day to go and chef in America. He ended up being the chef for the King of Jordan. A war comes in in this town. It was the war between this country. They come to kill the king. They kill the king, the employees, the chef, the son of my father. Father's best friend, gone. He was killed. So, my father, of course, devastated. I gotta get a chef, we're gonna open up. True immigration, 
we get the chef to come. So he did, so the school in Strasbourg got us a chef to come. And his name was Jean-Jacques Lel, under contract for two years. So he come, he's got a wife who's very pregnant, very pregnant, gorgeous. She looked like Brigitte Bardot, beautiful girl. He hated his job. And he told us, I'm here because I did go to cooking school. I didn't want to go. His father was a dentist in France. And he said, I'm going to do my two years, but I'm going to be honest. I'm out of here. The baby was born here, at Glensville Hospital. I went and helped her to tell her what to do. It was her first baby. But anyway, after a year and a half, my husband got a trailer to put in the back here where he could live with his wife, uh, be independent, because we had to give him room and board. We had him under contract. And he, after a year and a half, my husband said to him, you can leave now, because you're unhappy anyway. If you want to break the contract, you, I, I'm fine, I'm going to take over. So he was happy that he could get out. And he went to Florida, cook for a submarine place. But he used to say, I hate my job. And the food, um, everything was rare. He used to say, why do you got a French chef? If you want a steak well done, you should have got an American girl. I mean, he was not a nice person. So anyway, Papa took over. He would work at night with him, watch everything, how he made sauce, worked in the uh, refrigeration to make a living in daytime to bring some money in a place. And it was the struggle. People would say, you got a new chef. You, your food is so much better. I think Papa learned a lot from my mom. When he lived in, in um, Hotel Bel Air, while we were waiting for people to get married, and we were living in Hotel Bel Air, and then when the baby was born, we were, they had the house up in the country in Jersey. He always, always knew what my mom was cooking, just like he went to the baker in Omeku one day, 6 in the morning. We had asked, can he come and watch you make the bread? Because his bread don't come out the way the French bread. So Papa decided he wasn't sure it was the flour or the, the, the stove where you put the bread. It wasn't coming out crispy like in France. So he always was interested. He looked at them like Janine would cook, strong enough, and he watched everybody. My husband never went to cooking school, but he's got a million books in his office, and we sat and read. He wanted to try different dishes on us. If we, the family, thought it was good, that, that must go on the menu. That's how he turned out to be, what he was. But he used to say, don't call me a chef. I'm not a chef. So it's been pretty much the grandkids, all of them, kids, all of them, pretty much all worked here. But I stole the question, the interrogation point, how this place survive? But it did, and it's still here. This has been, this has been home. The people come here, they tell you, I feel like I'm home. I want this to continue. And when I'm downstairs, I got people that come here when they open this. When I opened, I was 30 years old. I've been here 53 years. Do you know how many customers came here? There were 40, 50. How old are they now? 90? Uh, they love to see me as much as I love to see them. So I do love the people, and the people know that. Track season, you get the only track season, maybe 
once during the season because a lot of these people come just for a week. It's a lot of restaurants to visit. But guess what? We must make Chez Pierre our number one. So to me, I want to be downstairs to say hello and give them a hug. That's why I want to keep going until I can't walk anymore. And maybe, who know, I get a scooter and walk around with the scooter and still give them a hug. There's some faith at the shows. Il est entré dans mon cœur une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. Celui pour moi, moi pour lui dans la vie. Il me l'a dit, il me l'a juré. Ah, and I love, I love the American people. Yeah, and I want to thank them all for what they've done for me and my family. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't say more. That's my it, Tyler. That's it? Yeah. for my husband today. It would be a story too. My dear, happy Father's Day. I miss you, you don't know how much I miss you. It's so tough, hard, hard. A flower from Pierre and from the restaurant. I miss you. We keep going, keep going. It's not the same without you, Joseph. No. And I brought flour. And I touched the plaque, I kissed the plaque and said, you know, Joe, I miss you every day. All I can think, my husband was a very quiet man and he can be in a better place. He's in peace, he's with all these guys. He, know, he used to say, I don't want no big, no flag, I don't want no big deal when I die. I'm not a hero. I did not fight that war. And when I went to bury him, I told that to the funeral home. My husband, they said, but he deserved a flag. I went back to France and it wasn't the same, I can tell you that. I used to say to Joe, you don't even know America. You got so many places, the Grand Canyon to visit. You don't want to go. You want to go back to France. Honey. I think sometime I used to say to him, you love France more than I do, Joe. And you, he was born in Detroit. And his family came in uh, Glens Falls when he was seven years old. He went to Jackson High School. So, uh, he's an American, he was an American. So every time we went back to Jussi, and we went to see my parents. He loved, he, he loved that show, man. And you know his picture we put there when that died two years ago? Look at this. Nobody touched it, it looks brand new. He loved them, you know. Boy, oh boy, he loved them. Yep, they got along so well. Oh, I miss him a lot. Because right now he would be here. Since he died, my life has never been the same. I just can't shake it. You know, when you bring a kid from another country, she's 19, you spend 60 years, it's, it's, it's a shock. 
And I think a lot of people don't realize it's like everybody goes through that. Well, maybe they do, but not everybody feels the same way. You know, just keep going in your life. That's hard. For me, it's very hard. But we had some wonderful year, and my G.I. Joe treated me like a queen. Worked hard for me, but yeah. Je vous embrasse. Je vous fais une grosse bise. Oh, la, 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 ça devient tragique. 